Okay, so we're going to go over what is traditional archery, what is traditional bow hunting, uh, what is traditional shooting. Well, there's lots of different styles. Uh, you're looking at something that we've been doing um, all nations and all tribes and all cultures over the earth for over 10,000 years. That's what you're embracing here. I mean, it's a heritage and connection to the past. Uh, it's a challenge, and we can all embrace that challenge. Instead of calling it the struggle stick, it might be a funny joke and a real misnomer, but it's one thing I get real prickly about because this is what I've shot my whole life. Uh, a lot of people that move down from a crossbow or a compound do find it challenging. And I completely sympathize with that. And we're going to address that a little later on. You know, it teaches resiliency, patience, perseverance, adversity. You know, you're learning to thrive with something very, very simple, right? And rely on yourself rather than technology and gadgets. Hey, if you need to shoot a clicker, if you need to shoot, you know, a release, if you need to start off with those things and move down, all the power to you, go for it. There's nothing wrong with those things, but I think you'll find as you go along that you'll need them less and less and you rely on yourself more and more. You know, you're learning to be comfortable being uncomfortable. And along with that, you know, and I got to say it, with regards to traditional archery, more so modern archery has moved away from bow hunting as a close range skill and in doing so the sport has moved further away from ethical shot presentation you know we've embraced distance instead of the primitive aspects the close getting close right and moving farther away from a target isn't always the best thing right hey i'm not hacking up any other sports all the power to them but bowling was never meant to be a long range game right that's what rifles are for. Um, talk a little bit about picking your first bow. You do not need to go off, contact your local custom bowyer. Nothing against a lot of them are my best friends in some cases. And you don't need to go and pick a custom bow right away. Um, it's a lot of money, a lot of expense. To get into the sport, you can go out. There's almost every major uh, company now sells a kit bow, right? There's lots of great kit bows out there you can get, and they're not going to cost more than a few hundred dollars to start off. They come with matched arrows, they come with a tab, they come with an arm guard uh, for the string hitting your arm just to learn. You don't need something expensive. And the most important part is you're going to have a lot of problems shooting if you're not shooting a bow you can draw sufficiently. In fact, people even moving down from a, a 60 to 70 pound compound. I highly recommend them moving down to even a 40 pound or a 35 pound bow to get your form down, you know, get your shot cycle down and develop your structure and then step out a little bit, get a 45 or 50 pound bow once you've built up, you know, the attributes you need to actually shoot that traditional bow. Now we come down to the fun part, picking what kind of bow you want. Do you like a recurve? Do you like the shape of it? Do you like the straight limbs of a long bow? Um, this is more a hill style string follow bow. Uh, they call American D-shaped bow because of the shape of it. I mean, uh, this is a custom that was made for my dad. This is almost a partial custom, a production recurve here. I like the nostalgia of shooting a recurve. I was raised around them. I remember being a, a little kid when I started going out with my dad at three years of age and everybody had all these recurves and they're the, the woods and the laminations and the shapes of them all has always appealed to me and I've kind of it's kind of stuck with me and um, you know I've got friends of mine and people I've coached that shoot everything from Asiatic horse bows to uh, self bows uh, you know flat bows long bows uh, reflex deflex long bows static recurves takedown recurves there's a lot of variety and that's the cool thing you can learn to make your own arrows, you can learn to fletch your own arrows, you can make your own cresting on your arrows, which is the colorization on them, even right down to the color of the fletching, the knock color, you know, everything, uh, wood arrows, carbon arrows, aluminum arrows, that's the cool thing, this can be completely customized to who you are as an individual, uh, right down to your quivers, back quivers, uh, you can get into some of the um, indigenous quivers even, Lakota style, uh, which sit two or three different ways on you, just amazing how much you can actually customize this to yourself. Um, I prefer a bow quiver just because it's efficient the way I hunt and I like the added weight 
the way I can't my bow sideways to open up my sight picture. Um, my dad prefers a back quiver. So to each his own, and that's one of the great uh, cultural aspects or craft aspects of this sport and the heritage that goes along with it. You're supposed to enjoy it. It's not a struggle stick.